Hello everybody, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use Socrative. I ran into this not too long ago as an app on the iPad and I found it very useful and wanted to just do a quick tutorial on how it works. I've shown it to several people since then as well as a class of teachers and everybody has found it very useful and are excited about the opportunity to use it. Now one of the things I like about this program is that it's on the web, it's good for PCs and Macs, it's great for a opportunity to work with your class, give them suggestions, uh, survey them, do some in-class type of things you might with a clicker, uh, but you can do it free if the students have a device that's hooked up to the internet, a uh, computer, iPad, a uh, smartphone, or if you're in a situation where uh, maybe they bring in their own devices or you're in a computer lab. Any one of those situations are great for a situation like this where you want to get some information from them but uh, you don't want them to have to go out and buy something or download something because by uh, simply doing it yourself the students can access and take quizzes and see those results without having to download something themselves. So I'm over at this website Socrative.com and what I'm going to do is go into the teacher login. You'll see that there's both a student login and a teacher login. Um, certainly if you're going to set up something and create a service you're going to go to the teacher login here. If you are a student and you're going to be taking it, then you'd enter the student login there. So I'm going to go in here. If you haven't already created an account, you can do so. It's free uh, by going into the Create Account button. Otherwise, you can type in your email address and password and log in. When you do so, you'll come to a main screen where you can take a look at your room number, which is going to be important. The room number is what the students will put in to be able to access your room. No matter how many quizzes you create or where you do this, your room number is going to be the same. It's the one that's assigned to you. So that's a number you need to remember, and your students are going to have to remember also. At this point, there's a number of different things you can do. Um, you can have single question activities where you just have a multiple choice, true, false, or short answer question that you're asking students. You can start a quiz if you've already created one, uh, create an exit ticket which is like a survey at the end of the class, or a space race which is kind of fun. You can, students can come in if you have multiple students they can get on different teams and then as they're going through the quiz or survey that you have as they're answering those uh, the team who finishes the quickest uh, wins kind of like a little rocket ship uh, for each team that goes across the screen. To create a quiz you go to manage quizzes and you'll see some of the ones that I've already created here. Um, but you can go in here and you can create a new quiz. To create a new quiz, you can go in. And at this point, you can start putting in questions. They have several different question types you can choose from, short answer or multiple choice. And you can create and just type in your question and your answer and go from there. You can add as many options as you need to. You can click on which one's the right answer. If you need to, you can move these around or you can delete them. When you're done you'll save the quiz then it will appear back as one of your quiz options. Uh, these are several quizzes that I've made before. Here's one for a conference. I also have some that I've done for testing as well as for a class I'm teaching. When you want to get in and launch a quiz or launch a survey, what you can do is go in here and start a quiz when you do so, you have some options to choose from, whether you're randomizing answer choices, uh, disabling immediate right-wrong feedback, hiding question explanations. You can also choose whether it's student-paced quiz, meaning the students can process it on their own speed, or whether it's a teacher-paced quiz. If it's a teacher-paced quiz, then what will happen is as you send the questions to the students, they will appear on their screen, but they can't go on to the next question until you've done. I like to use this one because if I want to take a look at where everybody is and discuss maybe what their responses are, I might give them a question and four answers, see what percentage of the class thinks A, B, C, or D is the correct answer. Uh, but I don't want them to just go on through it. I want to discuss that question and what the answer is before we go on. Then the teacher pays quiz is nice because the students can't progress on their own. They have to wait until this teacher sends the next question to them. A student paced quiz on the other hand they're able to go through on their own pace so somebody could go faster than another. Uh, again this is a good situation to have if you want them to just go ahead and complete it. You don't want to be discussing it or maybe it's an exit ticket um, but in that point you know, depending on what your purpose of it in class and how you're using it you could use either one of them for whatever fits. It'll give you the information here when somebody's actually taking a quiz of how many people are in your rooms when they come in they'll show up here and when you're answering questions particularly in the teacher paced quiz mode 
It'll show you for each question how many people have answered. Uh, great option again uh, when you're working with students. You can see how many of them have responded. So you know that if you got 15 or 20 people in your class and only 10 have responded, uh, you can wait for those other students to come in. As soon as they're all the responses are there, you'll see 20 out of 20 or 15 out of 15, whatever that happens to be. After you do a quiz, you can exit it, and it'll give you the option of what you want to do to that report. For example, you can have a report sent to you, or you can save it. So it's nice to have that option of being able to get the report if you want it. Uh, you can also just disregard the report if it's something you're doing in class and you're not really interested in what the students have said or saving that report. You can just go ahead and discard that. When you're done with Socrative, you can go down to Log Out. Um, you can clear rooms. You can also change your profile settings here. So again, it's a very good program, free, uh, works on multiple platforms, works on iPads. I've seen people use it on iPhones too. So it's a good program and a way to interact with your class, engage with your class uh, without having to have them buy clickers or if you don't have clickers accessible at your school, another way you can go about using that. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, go ahead and give it a try and see if it works for you.